All right, I'm gonna show you how to run a fatigue test on this guy. So first what we need to do, make sure we're in the correct user interface. This is the XY for the compliance calibration. X out of that, and then you go to this Instron 8511 Cyclic Ryan. Don't need that. Uh, and then here is our interface. You can press this uh, arrow, and that just shows everything in real time. All we have to really adjust here is the test frequency, data interval cycles, load duration, um, and then the offsets, right? So these will correspond to what's happening on our controller here. So for our test, I'm going to show you a size three example uh, from previous calculation. We determined that our uh, load amplitude is going to be between 100 and 736 newtons. So the amplitude is going to be 318 with the mean at 418. So we'll turn on the actuators. Uh, you can see we're in position control. Um, the position is previously suppressed from a prior test, so we're going to turn that off for now. What I'm going to do is load the beam, make sure we're on the appropriate crack length, 40 millimeters. I'm going to load the beam uh, and watch that. And then I'm slowly jogging it. Okay, there we are. I'm gonna load it to maybe about 100 and then I'll go to uh, the 418. Okay, then we can go load, go to negative 418. And it should jump to 418 eventually. So this deflected. Um, so now that we're at our mean load, what we can do is zero out our position. So position, go to setup, suppress, suppress current. So now our zero point is at uh, the mean load. Um, you can see the, well, you can't see it anymore, but the interface over there starts to change, uh, which is good. So now what we need to do is check our waveform. This is a load control test that we're running. So we're gonna make sure this is, uh, has the desirable parameters that we have. So cyclic sinusoidal load, the amplitude uh, is 318, that's what we want. If you wanna change this, click it, enter your value. Uh, but for us, we'll just put in 318. Enter, 0.5 hertz, uh, looks good. So we need to come back over here, make sure all that uh, is the same. So the test frequency, 0.5 Hertz. Data interval means we're taking every 100 cycles, we take 10 cycles of data. Uh, in our case, we actually want this to be 50. So every 50 cycles, we'll take 10 cycles of data. Um, and then uh, thankfully, yeah, this was already adjusted close enough. Uh, what we should have done when it was zeroed was adjust this load offset. Um, but the position we need to adjust, so this should be negative 0 0.01. Okay. Um, but yeah, before this, you. so in our case, I kind of messed it up. We'd have to unload it, and then at, at the zero point, we could correspond these. But we got lucky. It's the same amount. Okay. Also, this, uh, make sure your file is saved. So copy my file path. Paste it, slash fatigue test.txt, for example. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, this is all good. Um, looks good. So what we can do here is run the test. I'm gonna display the amplitude here. It'll take a little bit for it to get to uh, amplitude. Um, so I'm going to press start. You can see the amplitude. We're looking for 318. So that's begun to move. Once it hits 318, uh, then we can start running the test over here. So it'll take maybe 10 cycles ish. The beam is pretty compliant right now. So, all right. Say that's 318. Um, then we come over here. Make sure this is stopped because that'll reset the current cycles and press record and then press this arrow here. So now we're recording. You can see it's saving. 
10 cycles of data uh, in this package. And there is our fatigue test uh, file that we made. Okay, then what I like to do, um, yeah, see now we're at 318, so we're looking good. Position is being tracked right now. I usually leave it, so display two, leave it on minimum. That's the easiest way to determine if the crack has grown or not. If this number changes significantly, that indicates that the crack has grown. So what I do then, we set our event detectors. These are our stop limits. So event detector one, position, type, minimum, uh, negative 4.5. So this is saying the actuator will turn off. In this case, we know that uh, because the action is actuator off. So in this case, if it exceeds this value, so let's turn that on in case if something bad happens and like it gets dislodged and the actuator starts going crazy. Uh, vent detector two, maximum, uh, 3.42. Let's check the maximum up here. Max 1.69. So so this gives us a little bit of uh, extra. Yeah, we'll, we'll turn that on. Uh, so like I said, if the actuator starts going crazy, it'll, it'll turn off. Vent detector three, this is a load, load one. Um, perfect, yeah, we're at, let's see, the minimum load, let's see what the minimum load would be. Negative 736, so, okay, uh, negative 800. It should never go past that because we're in a load control, but uh, we'll turn this on just in case if something happens. Um, we can say four, you know, if you want to change this, if you want something other than load, uh, you can do position, load, uh, whatever. Um, I usually just do position and load. If you need to change the type, so minimum or maximum, those are probably the only two you'll need. Uh, you can change that. You can change the value. So previously we had 800, negative 800. Uh, change that to whatever you want. Um, on and off, yep. So then now you're set. You're safe. Amplitude control is on. Make sure that's on before you start the test. My bad. Uh, load control. Uh, yep, it's all goodness. We're tracking the cycles. We're saving the data. And then you can come over here and grab the data in the middle of the test by copying it onto your thumb drive um, to check if the crack has grown via the plot. Uh, other than that, you should be good to go.